Biome Check 2-1, let's put SyncThing on a Synology NAS. So SyncThing, if you don't know what it is, you can just go to their website, SyncThing.net, check it out. But it's basically just for file and folder syncing between multiple devices. And it's on a lot of different formats. Like you can get it for a Mac, Windows, Android. Yeah, they got a bunch of different ways to get SyncThing on your device and start syncing them. But we're going to be doing it on a Synology NAS, which... They don't have on their website because we're going to be using Docker. Actually, you know what? Do they have that on here? No, they don't have it on here. Wait, Synology. No, they don't. Okay. They don't have it officially for Synology. So we're going to do it tried and true the old way, the old the old fashioned way. We're going to use Docker. So they do not have a Docker image on their website. They actually suggest going to linuxserver.io. So we're going to head over there to linuxserver.io. And they contain and maintain a bunch of different community images is what I'm reading here. But basically, they got a lot of Docker stuff we can use. So I'll click on Fleet. And then I'm just looking for sync thing. And if I click here, there's a section called Docker Hub. And I'm just going to click this blue link. And if I scroll down, I've got the text that I need right here under Docker Compose. So I'm just going to highlight all this text. And careful. There we go. Got it. Highlight it. And then I'm going to come over to my Synology NAS. And I only need one program. And that program is Container Manager, which if you don't have, go to Package Center, type in Container Manager. Oh, too far off. Manager. There we go. And it'll show up for you. If it's not showing up, that means that it's not officially supported on your model of Synology NAS. But maybe Google around and see if others have gotten it to work on your model. So we'll start by clicking on Container Manager, and we're going to go to Project, Create. And under Project Name, I like to keep it simple. I just go with Sync Thing. You might want to complicate it and call it Resilio, which is a totally different program. Wouldn't recommend it. Let's stick with Sync Thing, but you could call it whatever you want. And then under Path, we need to make a folder for the Docker-related files for Sync Thing. So under File Station, I'm going to go into my Docker Share, which you should have by default if you install Container Manager. And then create folder, I'm just going to call it sync thing, which again, you could call it whatever you want, but I'm going to stick with sync thing. Now I will go back to container manager and under path, set path, I'm going to go to Docker, sync thing, and hit select. So source, instead of uploading a Docker compose, we're going to create one and it's going to create it in that same folder. So I'm just going to paste in all that text here. And this is all that a Docker, this is all that a YAML file is, just a bunch of text. So we just need to make a couple of changes here. The first things that we need to do down the line. So let's start with the UID and GID. If you don't know how to get those, these are, it's trying to get an ID for your Synology user as well as its group ID. So we can just go to, let me, oh, I got to scoot things over. Let's go to control panel. And then in control panel, we are going to go to task scheduler, create, schedule task, user defined script. And then task name, I'm going to type in get ID. Again, you can name whatever you want. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to uncheck enabled. And then under task settings, there's a section called run command and user defined script. I'm going to type in ID space greater than sign space. And then it's what, what I'm going to do is um, this is basically just running a Linux command and it's going to spit out some information for us and then it's going to make it into a text file. So for this last bit, I'm going to go into file station. I'm going to right click Docker and click properties and copy this file location if I can do it exit out of here, and I'm going to paste that here. And then I'm going to type in forward slash id.txt. So what this is going to do for me is get all the information I need, and it's going to make it into a text file called id.txt located in the Docker share. So again, you can put it wherever you want. I feel like that's a good location, though. So that way, when you're making Docker containers in the future, you'll know where this id text is. So I will just click OK, and then I just need to run it. So I'll click it and click Run. And then, yeah, I'm pretty sure that I want to run it. And we're good. So the reason it's not enabled is because then it's going to run that every day, and I don't really need it to run every day. So it is unenabled. So now if I click back into my Docker share, look who showed up, id.txt. If it's not showing up for you, make sure that you click out of that folder real quick and then back in, and it should show up. So we got the numbers we need. So our UID is 1028. Yours is probably different, but your GID probably is 100. So I will close out of here and go back to Container Manager. So PUID is 1028, and then the GID is 100. And then for time zone, we're just going to type in America forward slash new underscore York. But you can type in wherever you live and wherever your time zone is. And I'm going to scroll down to volumes. So the way that volumes work, typically it is a folder path to the left, and then a colon, and then a folder path to the right. So in the case of config, we only need to change what's to the left. And I'm just going to name this period forward slash config. So what's to the left is it's looking for something on my Synology NAS. So let's make this folder. I'm going to go back into file station, docker, sync thing, and then I'm going to create a new folder called config. And that will work. So if that doesn't make a lot of sense, this period is actually shortcut for wherever I am. And then the rest is where the config folder is. So 
The location of this is the stalker compose.yaml that we're making, and that's gonna end up in this folder. So that's why we can type in period. But to make it less confusing, I could just copy that path and then I could just paste it here. And that's the same thing as what I just wrote. So just so you get an idea of what I'm doing here. So period config, that's how that works. So now the path to data, let's say I wanna share a folder that is not gonna be in this config folder. So it, when I'm in sync thing and I start creating folders, I think it, they, they will show up in that config folder. But let's say I've got a bunch of episodes of Legends of the Hidden Temple that I wanna share with a different computer. I would go to Docker. I'm gonna make a folder just, just as a placeholder. So I'm gonna type this folder called shared goodies. And in there is gonna be a bunch of Legend of the Hidden Temple episodes. You know, all of those kids, uh, they're still in that temple to this day. They're stuck there forever, even the winners. So if I'm in, all right, so what you wanna do, you might actually, you might wanna share an entire share folder or a folder inside a share, but all you wanna do is the folder that you wanna share, just right click it, click properties, and copy that location. So back in Container Manager under Data1, I'm gonna replace this path to Data1 with that folder. And then to the right, I can actually, I can actually name this whatever I want. So when I'm in, when I'm in sync thing, it actually can't access all the folders of my Synology NAS. It can only access what I'm giving access to. And in this case, I'm giving it access to that shared goodies folder. So I'm just gonna keep that name the same, shared goodies. But I could name it whatever I want. I could name it Legends Episodes but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna name it shared goodies. Shared path two, you can just keep this pattern going and I believe you can make as many paths as you want. This will make a little bit more sense when we're in, when we're in the sync thing, but I'm gonna actually, what's called comment that out. So I'll just put this pound sign in front of it or, or hashtag. And that's basically just gonna say, hey, uh, don't use whatever is here, but keep it. So that way I've got like a little template in case I wanna add something else in the future. The only other thing you need to make sure is that your user that you're using, that you're doing all this with, will have permission to access this folder. So if you're having issues, a lot of times it could be a permissions issue. So you can check that. I think if you just click on your folder, right click properties, permissions, and you can just make sure that whatever user you want to have permission to that folder has permissions. If you're having issues, hopefully, hopefully you don't have any issues. So we will, we're good here. That That's all set up and we can start up sync thing. But I do want to remember this number 8384 because that's how we're going to access it. So I'm going to click next. I am not going to set up a web portal. Click next and then start the project once it is created and click done. So sync thing will actually install pretty quickly. It's not a big program, but here you go. So container created and we're getting exit code zero, which is exactly, it's exactly what we want. And then just for a little reassurance, project sync thing was successfully built. So there we go. Close out of here, we got a green light. So that's, um, that doesn't necessarily mean it's good to go, but because it's really small, it's probably good to go. So the way that we access sync thing is by using the IP address of our Synology NAS, colon, that port number that we looked at earlier. So if you don't remember it, like I don't right now, because uh, even though it was three seconds ago, I already forgot. Just go to project, double click sync thing, click YAML configurations, and under ports is the first port. And if you don't know the IP address for your Synology NAS, that's also real simple. Just come up here to widgets, make sure that system health is checked on. And then if you look under LAN one, that's probably your IP address. If not, it's one of these other ones. And it's most likely the one that'll give you an IP address that starts with 192.168. Probably dot one dot something. So in my case, I'm gonna go to 192.168.86.60 colon eight three eight four. And there we go, we're in sync thing. If it's not working for you, make sure that you are not typing in HTTPS. It's got to be HTTP. And if you are using the built-in Synology firewall, you also have to make sure that port 8384 is open. So that way you can access it. And yeah, so you're in. If you want, you can help them out and allow anonymous reporting. Sync thing is an interesting program. There are a lot of better tutorials than what I'm gonna provide on how to use it. I'll give you a very quick rundown kind of on the Synology specific stuff. But one of the first things you should do is actually add a username and password because basically anybody who has access to your home network and can type in this IP address can access sync thing. And you know, they, they could, mess things up for you if they really wanted to. So you'll just make a username, I'm gonna type in volume data 21 and then my very secure password, which is not just VD21, that would be ridiculous. I'm gonna click save and then it's gonna ask me to authenticate volume data 21 and then VD21, stay, stay logged in and then log in and we're good. All right, so now that is password protected. And what you wanna know is how to add a folder. So let's click add a folder because I wanna share my shared goodies folder with all my other devices that have sync thing. 
So I'm gonna start down here where it says folder path. Remember, this doesn't have access to your Synology NASA's folder path. It only has access to what you gave it access to. So in my case, I gave it access to shared goodies. And you can see if I start typing that in, it already shows up. If I start typing in an S, you see these other folders, that's not part of your Synology NAS. That's part of the file system that SyncThing kind of builds in when it's when it's um, it's all in its Docker container. But you probably don't need to worry about those or want to use those. Just use the folder that you made, shared goodies. And it's not going to be the name of the folder on your NAS. It might be if, like me, you name them the same thing. But let me go back here real quick. Remember I did shared goodies. The name that it's going to show up is whatever you put to the right. So if I had put Legend of the Hidden Temple episodes as the shared folder name, that's what I would be typing in here. So in this case, whatever is to the right of that colon, that's the folder that it's looking for here. And then you can change all this, like for the ID, shared goodies, and then folder labels, shared goodies. They have a description on what all this is and how you should be naming it. I definitely recommend for stuff like this, Give everything, make it all lowercase, and don't use spaces. Use a hyphen or an underscore. I like hyphens because they're easier to type in. I don't have to stretch down. So yeah, and that's how you do it. And then sharing, if you had any other sync thing devices, this is where you would share that. But I'm going to click save. And that's how that works. You could just click add a remote device. That's how you would add another device that has sync thing. You can go to, I think, actions show ID. And that's how you'd get that number. So if I wanted to share this with another ID, with another, if I wanted to share this with another machine that had sync thing, that sound right? I would click copy here, I could share it by email address, and then I would just paste it in the other machine. I would click add remote device, and then I could paste that number in the other machine. Or you can use a QR code, however you want. But yeah, that is how you get sync thing on a Synology NAS. It's a little tricky to use if you've never used it before, but there are a lot of really good resources and videos out there. Definitely recommend, um, wrong site, syncthing.net. They've got a lot of good documentation on it too. So official sites look are pretty good for that, as well as YouTube. I'm sure there's plenty of YouTube videos out there on how to use SyncThing, but good luck to you.